Welcome back to Northwest City Politics in the Know with Juanita. We're glad to welcome you back to our show again this week. You know, we're really glad for people like you that are interested in what's happening in our cities. Because it is important for good government, for city residents, city councils, mayors, even city staff to all have back and forth ideas and sharing their concerns or what they like about their city. So we're glad that you've, been, you've joined us. If you haven't seen us before, we will have information on from one or more of the cities in our not CCX's viewing area to fill us in on what's current and what's going to be happening in the future. And then from time to time, we'll have things about different departments in the city, so you'll learn a little bit more about that. And we're very happy tonight to welcome Captain Todd Hessman. He's in charge of New Hope's Police Reserve Unit. Thank and you. a lot of people probably don't even know what the Police Reserve is. I know I know a lot more now than I did before I started <laughs> setting things up for our show. Yeah, that's true. Oftentimes I will uh, be mistaken for a sworn police uh -huh. officer. And they're not the same thing. We, we do different things. We are volunteers. Right. And uh, we actually have different uniforms, but mm -hmm. people don't, aren't aware of that see a uniform and they think, oh, you must be in the police department. Huh? Uh, right, and that's just a quick note, at least in New Hope, if you see a black uniform, okay. that's a sworn police officer. Uh -huh. If you see a light blue uniform like I'm wearing, then I'm either a reserve officer or a community service officer. Yeah, and most of our cities around here have police reserve units that we're going to explain who and what and why and encourage people to join, right? Sure. And then we uh, talked a little bit about the structure of your unit. So it was the captain, that's you, <coughs> and then that's a right. couple of lieutenants and a couple of sergeants. They make up the reserve board because well, we haven't talked about that. Except there's only one lieutenant. <clears throat> okay, one lieutenant. So I'm in charge captain, of... Captain, lieutenant, yeah. two sergeants. As a captain, I'm okay. in charge of the reserve unit. Um, and that just means I interface with the chief to, to set what the policies and right. procedures are. And the lieutenant is really my assistant. Okay. I delegate a lot of stuff sure. to him. And then the sergeants, I, we have two sergeants, and they usually are assigned specific duties. Uh -huh. Like we might have one that's in charge of scheduling. Okay. And one that's in charge of our equipment, sure. something like that. And so between the four of us, we kind of manage everything. Right. So you've got, got help. Oh, yeah. yeah. If I was doing it all myself, I'd have resigned a few years <laughs> ago. Now, tell us <clears throat> about the other titles then, because there were several that were on your website. Sure. Well, we should start at the bottom. Okay. Okay. When you, when you apply and you come in for an interview and we accept you after okay. your interview, right. then you're a cadet, uh -huh. which basically means you're a reserve officer in training. Uh -huh. um, you don't have a uniform yet. Okay. You're not coming out on patrols because you haven't been trained. Right. So we then go through a training process. Um, usually I say eight, eight weeks maybe. Oh, okay. One night a week where you come in and we teach you about the policies and procedures mm -hmm. and equipment and all those things. <clears throat> if you pass that, and okay. there's some tests to take, so if you pass that uh, and you're accepted into the unit, then we get you a uniform, you start ah. participating and you're a rookie. Okay. So, because you, you passed the test now and you can right. start actually right. doing things. Um, <clears throat> so, basically, for three months ish, right. you're a cadet. The next nine months, you're on probation as ah. a rookie. And uh, assuming you pass all that and there's some training requirements Certainly. you have to go through, then you are accepted as a patrol officer. Ah. And uh, patrol officers have certain things that they're allowed to right. do. So rookies are, would be somewhat restricted in what right. they can do, certainly what they can do by themselves. I was going to say, would they be mainly working with somebody then? Yes. Okay. Certainly they have to, a rookie for instance, if they go on, on patrol, they have to go on patrol with a field training officer. Okay. Which are all of our senior oh, sure. officers. Sure. <clears throat> right. Uh, you can't go on patrol with another rookie because oh. otherwise where's your leadership? <laughs> right. Where's right. your r responsibility? Right. Um, as a patrol officer, you're still, you're still under some of those same constraints, but you can do more things by yourself. Okay. So I, w I, would be, I would hesitate to send a rookie to a uh, city festival by themselves. Oh, right, right. But I would not hesitate to send a patrol officer to a right. city festival by themselves. Because uh, they've, they've got enough experience that I'd, I wouldn't have a problem with it. 
<clears throat> and then after you've been a patrol officer for a while, at least okay. at least a few months, uh -huh. at 18 months, you can apply to be a senior patrol okay. officer. And uh, that's another test. It's just, it's like your cadet test, except sure. harder. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, Make sure you know what to do. Yes, exactly. And then if you're a senior patrol officer, then you can lead a patrol. Ah. So then you can be the senior officer okay. on a patrol. You can do the driving and you can make the decisions sure. as to what we're doing, what calls we take, when we back up the officers, when we stay away. Uh -huh. um, and that's that's kind of the goal is right. to Right, that's be, what you're aiming. Right. And and so if you're a senior patrol officer, I need I need half and half. I need cuz oh, I need senior sure. officers and I need sure. junior right. officers yeah, cuz we, yeah. we go out in pairs. Right. I can I can pair two senior people. Uh-huh. I can't pair two junior people. Right. Right. So, uh, once you're a senior patrol officer, uh, you, you're then leading patrols. You're doing a lot of the lot of the uh, activities, uh, and then we will usually try to keep two sergeants. So we'll right. take two senior patrol officers that have been around for a while uh, and that are active and trustworthy, right. and we'll turn them into we'll promote them into sergeants. And then uh, there's a lieutenant uh -huh. that's appointed by the chief of police and me. Okay. And then, uh, and then there's the captain, me, right, and that's right. appointed by the by the chief. So there's a whole layer of training, and uh, you're not pushed to do anything you're not prepared for. That's correct. We right. have a lot of training that, that yeah, we have to go through. Yeah, it sounded like it, right? Yeah, and that that might be intimidating to people. Um, so you have your cadet training, uh -huh. which is the first eight eight to ten right. weeks. And um, and that's I think that's kind of a differentiator for our unit. I haven't mm -hmm. heard that other units do that. I'm sure oh. they they all have some kind of training. Sure. But ours is pretty formal. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then after that, you're on. You get your uniform. You're doing right. patrols and things. But we ask for our officers to get first responder training, EMR oh, right, certification right, right. from the state for. Uh, um, within the first 18, 18 months okay. for sure, uh, they have to get CPR certified the oh, first sure. year, but then the, the first responder certification within 18 months if they want to get promoted. Uh, we also ask our officers to take the Hennepin County Reserve School. Okay. Um, and they don't have to take that right away, but again, within 18 right. months. Um, and then if you're going to drive, which you know mm -hmm. you don't do right away. Yeah, right. <clears throat> you don't, you're not supposed to drive as a rookie yeah. unless you're just being trained. But uh, in order to do that, you have to take the New Hope Defensive Driving oh, class. Oh, right, right. If you're going to drive lights and siren, which we do in yeah. New Hope, you're supposed to take the St. Cloud Driving School ah. where you'll, you'll learn the, the hard driving. And uh, so we try and do that. We do go to the gun range and get gun training, okay. get, get certified with guns, uh -huh. even though we don't carry guns. Right. We still need to know how to handle guns. Oh, and, right, and, right. Um, and then we'll also do defensive tactics training once a year. So we have to um, set aside an evening right. to be trained by the officers and how to defend ourselves, do cuffing and searching and all yeah. those things. Um, and there's other optional training. That's all uh -huh. the required training. Ah. <clears throat> there's other optional training, such as uh, we might be invited to take go to traffic school once uh -huh. in a while. I've been invited to do the storm, storm uh, what do you call it? Storm watcher training. Oh, uh, right, right. So uh, that I've done a couple times, uh -huh. and, and there's been a lot of other opportunities. Can't do them all, but right. um, it's good to try and keep up. Once you get your medical training, your, uh -huh. your EMR, you're required to do one day of training a year to maintain uh -huh. it, which is better than 10 weeks of, right. <laughs> of, of taking classes to get Definitely. it in the first place. So the, there's really an opportunity for people that join the reserve to mm. learn a lot of things. Yeah, I, I, one of the things that, that would I be interesting. Yeah, one of the things I liked about uh -huh. the reserves was I knew it would force me to go take a little right. bit of medical right. training because I knew I'd have to get the first responder right. training. So that was really good. I, I I don't think I ever would have done it on my own. Right. But this kind of made me do it. I had to pick a time right. when I could right. go. And, and so it's going to help you with what you're doing, but it could help you in other instances, too. Yeah, I kind of feel like uh, if I'm at a picnic or something and somebody has a heart attack, I have half an idea what to do. Right, right. I might not have the equipment, but I got right, an idea what right. to do. So that, that can be something that would interest people out there into 
a benefit of joining. Yeah, I would encourage people to, to do that. I mean, it's it's a good idea to take these kinds of classes right. anyway, but if you're like me, you don't do it on your own. Yeah, you you yeah. have to have a reason, right, and right. The police reserves is one of those reasons. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And then talk a little bit about your interaction with the chief of police. Sure. Well, <clears throat> as as reserve captain, I'm supposed to be in charge of the budget uh -huh. of, for the reserves. <clears throat> in reality, the budget is kind of, um, let's just say it's constant, right? So they just kind of roll it over every year. And so what I do is I ask the chief if I need changes. Ah. <clears throat> so uh, if I need, uh, I, I'll check with him. And when, when do we get a new squad car? Uh -huh. You know, because that's on a, it's on a schedule. Oh, certainly. Yeah, but if I want a different squad car, or if I want a printer in a squad car, or if I want, uh, if I want to get certain equipment, uh, he's he's really in charge of the budget. Now I have my own budget that I'm sure. managing too, but but he's supposed to be in charge of the equipment budget okay. and the <clears throat> squad cars, and so I I I usually go to him for those kinds uh -huh. of things, and um, and but for the most part, I think. I'm not even aware exactly how much they spend on us because uh -huh. it's just been kind of rolling yeah, over. Yeah, part of the interaction. Yeah, but I will. I will usually talk to him. I, I think just a few months ago, I grabbed him in the parking lot <clears throat> and said, "Hey, there's some things I want to talk right. to you. I, I really think we need to get look at the new squad car. Oh, and right. There's this driving training that we we haven't had for a while. We really need to do and." And uh, and oh, and then there's a we need a printer in the squad car, and he said, "Yeah, those are all good ideas." Uh -huh. <laughs> so I mean, but that's 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 how I get him right. in the budget right. is right. bring him up to him, oh, and, and then he puts him in. But I haven't had to do a, a lot of accounting uh -huh. as that's, reserve that's captain, so right. that's good. I, I I could if I had to, yeah. but I don't enjoy it, so right. I'd rather not. Then we'll talk a little bit that you definitely have a need to find volunteers. Um, then you're looking for people right now. <clears throat> talk a little bit about backgrounds of people on, on, in your group or that have been in your group in the past. Because people out there are watching our show, we want them to feel comfortable for if they're thinking of joining, that that's the kind of people that are already sure. in there. Yeah, I've always said that there's two kinds of reserve officers. Um, you you always find the students, okay. law enforcement students, okay. and they're looking for a resume builder. Sure. Reserve reserves is a great opportunity to do oh, that. Oh, definitely. <clears throat> you can't wait too long, though. Uh -huh. Some of them wait until just before they graduate, uh -huh. and then they want to join the reserves for the summer. Uh -huh. Well, one of our requirements, I don't know if I mentioned, yeah. but one of our requirements is we like to have a commitment of a year. Oh, certainly. <clears throat> so we're not real anxious to bring somebody on who's going to get trained, stay for two months, and then go. Because yeah, right. that, that's an investment that oh, we're making right, in them. Right. We're going to get them some equipment. We're going to spend a lot of time uh -huh. training, and then they're going to be gone. <clears throat> uh, we, you know, we appreciate any time we get from them, yeah. but that's not a very efficient use of our right. resources. So we ask for a year. No, we can't enforce that. You could, right. you could join, and you, you end up getting a job offer earlier or than you expected. something happens that, that's, that's understood. Right. But at the same time, we could fire somebody, too, yeah. oh, or, right. in, in less than a year. So it goes both ways. So it's not that we, um, we, we can't accept somebody, right. but we're trying to be judicious with the use of our time and resources. So we want somebody who's going to preferably be in school for a year and a half to two years okay. yet so that <clears throat> we'll get some good time out of them and they can help us train up their next replacement. So we, we like the reserve uh, students to come from law enforcement, but I don't like everyone to be ah, from law enforcement. Have a more of a mixture. Huh? Well, yeah, if, if everyone's in, in law enforcement school, they're all going to be short timers. Right, they're going to. Um, and then I got a lot of turnover. I got to constantly be training people. I don't mind training people, but right now I'm, I'm, I don't have any junior people because all ah. my junior people were oh. law enforcement students uh -huh. and they got jobs and they're gone. Um, so I actually would like to see more of the latter type, which is more like me. Uh, I'm a professional. I'm right. not, not a police officer. I'm a software engineer and uh, just community minded. I uh -huh. thought this would, this would be, uh, if you're like me, you know, you volunteer for church, you do, right, a little, right. do a little political stuff, but <clears throat> I was looking for some way to volunteer for the community. Right. And this seemed like a good one to me. It was, yeah. it was interesting 
because you're you, you well you get to some interesting training you yeah. get to ride around in a squad car who doesn't like that right and <clears> you're <throat> doing something out of the ordinary life right, right? for those out there that's that we're right reaching to <clears throat> i ran into a guy uh a few weeks ago about a month ago and uh and and he saw I was a I was a wearing a uniform. And he started uh -huh. asking me some questions. Like most people, he, he th assumed I was a right. police officer. Right. <clears throat> I said, "Well, I'm actually a reserve officer." Oh, okay. And then he started asking me about it, and he was interested. And and he's like, "Oh, but I, you know, I'm pretty old. We don't have an age limit, uh -huh. <clears throat> right? So you can be 50, 60. You can be 70. Now, usually when depending you depending on your health. Yeah, depending on your health. <clears throat> there are th there are some people that are in pretty good health when they're oh, seventy, and there's some definitely. people that are not. But usually, fifty, sixty is is fine. I'm like I said, I'm fifty four, and I figure I'm going to be around for another ten yeah. years. Um, so, it what I like about having some older people, even retired people, is that they're they're more constant. They're going to be right. around for a few years, I hope. Right. And so. They're, they're going to be around to train a couple generations yeah. of other reserve officers. That's what I'd like to see. Give on down the line. Yes, yes. So we don't have any, any requirements on age other okay. than minimum. And so it's good to get some people that are more mature. Uh -huh. Like I said, I started when I was 42. Sure. Now I realize a lot of people, they're in the middle of a professional career at 42. <clears throat> and we're at, but we're asking for 100 hours a year. Right. And if you take training into account, in the first year, it's may, too hard. maybe it's 150 hours. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, but it's good. It's good training. Right. It's good training. So I, I would encourage people if they're at all interested to uh, fill out an application, and then uh, with the first step, because right. I call them and I talk to them, right? Because I want to find out if if it's a good fit yeah. before we take you through the rigmarole. Oh, right. We're not right. going to send you through 10 weeks of training and, and then say you don't work, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't want to do that. No. So, uh, yeah, so th that's good. And then people, they have to have a little bit of time. Uh -huh. One thing I've noticed is that some law enforcement students <clears throat> are trying to get done as fast as possible. And so they sign up for as many classes as they can mm. possibly fit in. And then they join the reserves. And then it's like, oh, I got so much going on. I got this test and I got to uh -huh. go through this class. And then I got skills training and I got this. I just can't, I can't fit in any training this week. I understand that there, you know, if you're like going through right. skills, right. you might need some time off. I get that. But uh, if you're not going to leave a little bit of margin in your schedule yeah. to be a reserve, you're probably better off not joining the reserve. Right. Because we are going to ask for some time. Oh, definitely. <clears throat> right. And the same thing's true if you're a professional, uh, you know, an older person. And, and, you know, if you have some time available, this is a great way to use it. On the other hand, if, if you don't think you can come up with any time at all, well, this is probably not a good idea, at least not at this time. Yeah, because at different points in people's <clears throat> lives, you have more time or less time. But even if you don't, even if the idea of being on the reserve is interesting to you now, but you don't have the time, keep that thought in mind. Right. Because then a little bit later in life, you might have more time. Well, as I said, I, I first was told about it. Right. I joined four right. years later. Right, right. It was funny. The person who who invited me was my lieutenant, Scott uh. Beal. <clears throat> and uh, he, I have to say, I, I talked to him two times, and both times uh -huh. he said, would you like to be a reserve yeah. officer? Yeah. He's, he's kind of an evangelist, I right. guess. Right, right. So that's, that's how we get most of our people, right. just word of mouth. Oh, right. Talking although, to each other. Although we do advertise on the city bulletin uh -huh. boards, and then that, that gets some interest. Now, what kind of professional background does some of the people have? We aren't talking names, but you're sure. a software engineer. What are some of the other kinds of, of employment well, backgrounds people have? Well, you get all kinds. Uh, one is, uh, well, I, I, I'm just thinking back over the years. I've had electrician. I've had uh, a manufacturer. Uh, I've had a machinist. Uh, um, I think there's somebody who works for the state of Minnesota uh -huh. out on the highways, right? Uh -huh. So. Uh, we've had police clerks that okay. have become reserve oh, officers. Sure. So we've we've had a pretty wide variety, yeah. actually. Uh, when you realize that probably half are okay. law enforcement right. students, right, right, and they're young, but uh, of the others, yeah, they've been all over. We've had other, I've had other software mm -hmm. professionals or uh, accountants, uh -huh. right. So they, they've come from all kinds of backgrounds. It's been yeah. fairly Find people diverse. out there to just be thinking about it. 
Sure. And if you're farther along, be sure to contact you. Yeah. Well, and and maybe New Hope Reserve Unit isn't the right one, but there are other reserve units. Oh, in, definitely. In city, right. So uh, Crystal has a unit, and Plymouth has a unit, and Ma yeah, all Maple around Grove. this area, yeah. right? Most cities, not all, but most cities right. have a reserve unit, and you should check into your city and see what they do. Sure. And then I ask you to oh, think of a few <coughs> interesting experiences that you've had along the way, or <coughs> that people have told you about. Just sure. to share a little of that kind of thing with our audience. Yeah. Well, uh, some of the things. One of the always comes to mind. Okay. People always say, you know, what are some of the interesting things you do? Well, there are some exciting things that happen. Okay. Um, usually we're not right in the middle of right. it. Right. But I for instance, when the city hall shooting occurred a few oh, years right, ago. Oh, right, right. Um, that was awkward because it was, it was, I mean, someone was killed. Oh, I know. And, uh, and, and they did a call out. Uh huh. You have to realize that what half the police department was in that oh yeah in that meeting uh, and so they basically took themselves out of out of the running in the oh, sense right that they yeah, had they're to, already there <laughs> and part of the pro whole thing going down well and they, they had to they had to surrender right well if they were involved they had to surrender their guns for, right. for evidence but uh if you were there you really couldn't be involved in no. the investigation no. so uh they had to call in hennepin county and uh -huh. hennepin county kind of took over and and they called us out I think everyone in the unit showed ah. up, and uh, I've never seen so many blinking lights in my oh, life. Right, because from every city around, they came to to be there, and uh, we came in, and I didn't know who to report to. Right, right? so I all the reserve officers report to me. Right, but I got to figure out who we report <laughs> right, to. Right, that was awkward, uh, and I'd go up to the Hennepin County deputy that was there and say, "What do you want us to do?" And, I don't think they were in any position yeah. to say it was it was kind of messy oh really right, messy. right but we ended up uh, uh guarding some of the doors uh -huh. and things and, and trying to record who was c controlling the access right <clears throat> and then there was traffic control and things so, so that was that was that was exciting right uh, but i'd rather not, <laughs> not do that uh, so we we've often been called out to swat situations okay where there's uh <clears throat> somebody well, I remember the one that, that happened quite a few years ago was there was someone uh, like across the street from Cooper okay. shooting, shooting a gun out oh, the door and they had a, wow. they had a school lockdown right. and they called us in for that. <clears throat> and so they set up SWAT and I know we were currying messages between yeah. the police department and the SWAT vehicle and we were in in the school trying uh -huh. to man control where the kids right. were going because right. they don't think they canceled school but they had lockdown. Uh -huh. So, and then a lot of kids didn't come to school because it was at the beginning of yeah. the day. So it was, it was messy. Oh, right. Um, but they, I think they put us in certain, um, certain hallways to not allow the kids to get through. Right. And uh, like I said, we were currying things around and we were just waiting for the resolution of, of the SWAT. Right. We, we've done a number of things like that where uh -huh. SWAT will be holed up trying, oh, trying right. to get They're in. handling it and you're handling the perimeter of it. Yeah, huh? well, they usually assign us to be on the perimeter uh -huh. just to manage traffic. They and, more um, people get a little bit brutal. irate. You know, no, my yeah. house is right there. I want to yeah. go there. And we've been told not right, to let them in. Right. Um, <clears throat> And usually, eventually, we relent a little bit if it, because sometimes those go on for half oh, a day. Oh, they, yeah, I've. You know. What's I've What's seen funny that. is that I think it was the day after the, the uh, the city hall shooting, right. there was a SWAT incident. Oh my goodness! <laughs> and uh, was the day after, or two days after, close. It was very close, and that was. And most of our our police department was not working. Oh, Crystal right. was covering for us, so that was that was another very awkward oh, situation. Oh yeah. But there are a lot of uh, kind of funny situations too. I was thinking back when I was a rookie, uh -huh. <clears throat> so it was a number of years ago, I was new and I was probably in w one of my first few patrols. Well, there was a call out for an animal situation. Okay. Well, animal calls are one thing that, w that we'll take. Okay. Medical calls and animal calls. And the other officers just said, 4151, that's our call number. Right. 4151 will take it. Yeah. <clears throat> and so. Uh, we went to it and we, we had no idea what, what you're it was. coming into. That right? We looked at the call and there wasn't a lot of details. Yeah. And <clears throat> so we uh, we go to the situation. And it was uh, Rockford Road. Uh, <clears throat> on Rockford Road, uh, just in front of what was then Sunshine Factory. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and and we drive up, 
and there in the middle of the street is this guy with a long stick like eight yeah. foot long stick and we're looking what's he doing with that yeah. stick yeah well there in the road was a skunk oh my goodness <clears throat> with a tin can over his head <laughs> <clears throat> so he uh he was trying to get that off, help this skunk right? to, to get this so i i assumed that the skunk was in the garbage dumpster right, for right. sunshine Looking for factory food, probably yeah. stuck his head into a can to lick out the stuck. tomato sauce and and couldn't get his head yeah, back out so yeah. now he's meandering around blindly <clears throat> and this uh, good samaritan yeah, yeah. found some big stick and thought if i can just yeah, get could, that yeah, can could, off his head yeah. So we showed up, and of course we had to put our lights on because we were in the middle of Rockford oh, right, Road. right, right. And uh, we stepped out of the squad car, and the guy walks up to us and said, here, gave us, <laughs> his, gave us his stick. Turn it <clears> over <throat> to you. Yeah, and, and I, was, I was pretty new, so I was like, what are we supposed to right, do with this? Right, And my partner said, I don't know, but I, I think we got to do something. Yeah. And I, I think I took the stick, and I just the skunk happened to be putting his head down right. a little bit so i just put the stick on top of the yeah. can pressed it against the road and, and his he and out. his head pulled out oh. <clears throat> and so uh then he kind of skedaddled on and i i was brand new at that point oh. <laughs> so i didn't know how things were supposed to be done and i right i said to my partner hey the skunk's getting away mm -hmm. Do we have to go catch it? <laughs> <laughs> and my, because I didn't know. I thought well, if you, yeah, what are you I thought if you got do? an animal call, you maybe had right. to had to catch it and bring it in or yeah, something. Or... And he said, if you want to go catch that, you go right <laughs> ahead. But as far as I'm concerned, he ain't bothering anybody uh, anymore. So we let him and go. And he could, right? <laughs> yeah. So that was everybody was lucky he didn't squirt, right? Yes. Yeah. No. That we were trying to keep oh, our distance. Oh, yeah. I, I thought I was going to have to go home and take a really long right, shower. Right. Right. No, he didn't. He didn't bother us. He just uh, skedaddled on. So that was that was pretty nice. A thankful skunk. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. So we've had uh, a lot of calls, like uh, <clears throat> animal calls. Uh huh. It's a. Uh, it's kind of heartbreaking when you get one like uh, there's a dying animal oh, in, in my yard. Yeah. And we do get those occasionally. And, uh, and especially sad when there's a kid there. Oh, <clears throat> and, right. And you got this dying animal, and, they'll, and they call, and I usually say, "Well, we'll take it away, and we'll see what we can do." Uh, but <clears throat> but uh, usually the animal's already dead by then. Uh, so we have a, a lot of those. Um, CSOs usually take a lot of those uh, calls, you know. So right. New Hope and Crystal have an animal control officer, uh -huh. Tom Mann. And he usually does that during the day. And then after hours, the community service officers usually oh, take sure. the animal calls. And you <clears> help <throat> them. And, and we would help them, sure. Right. Well, I want to thank you so much. We've gotten a lot of information to people out there, so sure. we hope they'll pursue it and we'll get a few more people contacting you to join. All right, great. And, and we're glad that you've been with us. Bye.